Come in, Doctor. This is the home of my youth. As a boy, I couldn't wait to escape from this house. Now I'm glad to escape back into it. Yes, John, it's a good hideout. The family must still live here. I hope there's a fatted calf awaiting the return of the prodigal. Fatted calf? Oh, Johnny, I'm so hungry. Look, Johnny. Drink! As if we were expected. Yes. A good omen. Who, who are you? What are you doing here? Aunt Abby. Aunt Martha. It's Jonathan. You, you get out of here! I'm Jonathan. You know your nephew, Jonathan? Oh, no, you're not. You're nothing like Jonathan. So don't pretend you are. You just get out of here. I see you're still wearing the lovely garnet ring that Grandma Brewster bought in England. And you, Aunt Martha, still the high collars that had the scars where Grandfather Zassin burned oh, you. Why, his voice is like Jonathan's. Have, have you been in an accident? My face, Dr. Einstein, is responsible for that. He a plastic surgeon. But I've seen that face before. Do you remember when we took the little Schultz boy to the movies and I was so frightened? It was that face. Take it easy, Johnny. Take it easy. The last five years, I give him three different faces. I give him another one right away. The last face, I saw the picture too, just before I operated. I was intoxicated. You see, Doctor, what you've done to me, even my family thinks I'm... Johnny, Johnny, you're at home in this lovely house. You know how many times he tells me about, about Brooklyn and about this house and about his aunt he loves so much. They know you, Johnny. Please tell them so. Well, Jonathan, it's been a long time. Bless you. It's good to be home again. Well, Martha, we mustn't let what's in the stove boil over. If you'll excuse us, Jonathan, unless you're in a hurry to go somewhere. You know, Johnny, we gotta think fast. The police, they got pictures of that face. I gotta operate on you right away. We gotta find some place. We gotta find some place for Mrs. Benalto, too. Don't waste any worry on that, Brad. Johnny, we got a hot stiff on our hands. Forget Mr. Spinalto. Well, we can't leave a dead body in the backseat. You shouldn't have killed him just because he said something about us. So what happens? We come to him for help and he tries to shake us down. Besides, he said I look like Boris Karloff. That's your work, Doctor. You did that to me. No, no, Johnny, please. We'll find some place and I'll fix you up right away. Tonight. Yes, tonight, but I have to eat first. And this time, I want the face of an absolute non-entity. Oh, yes, I know exactly what I'm going to do. You see, I'm going to take this. Be careful about the stitches this time. Oh, you leave that up to me. I'm going to take this piece here and lift it up. And you were careless last time. And the eyes of the little Schmidt, that's my specialty. The eyes are low. Leave the nose alone. Well, I'm sure you both want to get back to wherever you're going. My dear sweet aunties, I'm so full of your delicious dinner, I'm unable to move a muscle. Yes, it's nice here. I found it! I found it! <laughs> Gentlemen, be seated. Here it is, gentlemen, the story of my life, my biography. Here's the picture I'm telling you about, General. Here we are, both of us, President Roosevelt and General Goldos at Kelly Bertrand. That's me, gentlemen, and that's you. My, how I've changed. Well, this picture hasn't been taken yet. We haven't even started with on Kelly Bertrand. We're still digging logs. And now, General, we go to Panama and inspect the new lock. Oh, no, Teddy. Not to Panama. Uh, maybe some other time, Mr. President. Panama is long ways off. Nonsense. It's just down in the cellar. The cellar? Oh, well, we let him dig the Panama Canal in the cellar. General Gotos! Yes, sir? As President of the United States, Commander-in-Chief of the Army and Navy, and the man who gave you this job, I demand that you accompany me on inspection of the new wall. Teddy! I think it's time for you to go to bed. I beg your pardon? Who are you? I'm Woodrow Wilson, now go to bed. You know, you're not Wilson. But your face is familiar, let me see. 
No, you're not Jamie when I know now. Perhaps later on my hunting trip to Africa. Yes, you look like somebody I might meet in a jungle. Mm, I think perhaps you better go to bed now, Teddy. I'm sure he and his friend want to get back to their hotel. General Gozels, inspect the canal. All right, Mr. President, we go to bed now. Bully, bully. It's down south, you know. Bon voyage! <laughs> and Teddy, I must correct your misapprehension. You talked of our hotel. We have no hotel. We came here directly. Well, this is not your home. I'm afraid you cannot stay here. Dr. Einstein and I need a place to sleep. You remember that as a boy I could be disagreeable. It would not be pleasant for any of us Sith. But I don't have to go into details now, do I? Well, perhaps we'd better let them stay here tonight. Oh, hey, Johnny. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Dr. Einstein and I are converting Grandfather's laboratory into an operating room. We expect to be very busy. Hey, Johnny, down at the Tavern Canal, what do you think I find? What? See the hole he's digging? Four feet wide, six feet long, and it just fits Mr. Spinozzi. Just fits. You think they knew we were bringing Mr. Spinozzi all along? That's hospitality. <laughs> Rather a good joke on my end. They're living in a house with a body buried in the cellar. Yeah. Hey, Johnny, how do we get him in here? Yes, we can't just walk him in through the front door. We'll bring the car between the cemetery and the house, and after they've gone to bed, we'll bring Mr. Spinal to him through the window. Hey, Johnny. We're moving the car between the cemetery and the house. You two best get to bed. The car is all right where it is until morning. I don't want to leave it in the street. That might be against the law. Yes, that's right. You are out. Well, oh, just come oh, straight oh, along here now and see. You know he's really very nice, considering that he's a We're bringing the luggage through here. You two best get to bed. Oh, Jonathan, you can go right up. You're always waiting for us. I'm afraid we don't keep Brooklyn hours. You run a lot to bed. Well, we don't go to bed this early, yeah. and I'm sure you're both very tired. It's time I came home to take care of you. Take the bags upstairs. For the instruments, I'll come back later. Good night. Now we'll all go to bed. I'll wait until they're up, and then I'll turn out the lights. Run along, Aunt Martha. Just off the laboratory, Doctor. All right, Aunt Debbie. I'll be right up. Now, Aunt Debbie, turn out the lights. He's all right, Johnny. I'll open the window. You go around and hand him through. But he's too heavy for me. How about you go outside and push, and I'll pull him together and take him down to Panama. All right. We must be quick. I'll take a look around outside the house. When I tap on the glass, you open the window. It's dark in here. Oh, you don't live here. I'm in this house every day and I'm never once 
seen you. Perhaps Where you... are Miss Martha and Miss Abby? What have you done to them? We better introduce ourselves. May I present Dr. Einstein? Dr. Einstein? A surgeon of great distinction. And something of a magician. And now I suppose you're going to tell me that you're Bruce. Are... I am Jonathan Brewster. You're Jonathan? You've heard of me. Yes, they talk about you. What do they say about me? Just that there's another brother of Jonathan. That's all they say. That explains everything. And now that I know who you are, I'll just be running along. If you'll kindly unlock the door. That explains everything. Just what do you mean by that? Why do you come here at this time of night? I just thought I saw one of her drive up, but I suppose it was you. You thought you saw someone drive up? Yes, weren't you just outside? Isn't that your car? You saw someone at the car? Yes! What else did you see? Oh, no, that's it. That's all. You give it two names. No, I think she's dangerous. Let go of me! Let go of me! No, visitors, it's going to be a private funeral. Kate! Kate! Tell these men who I am! Who oh, that's my daughter? Take care of you, Mortimer. 
in just a little while. Doctor, this affair between my brother and myself has got to be settled. We've got enough trouble as it is. Come on, let's go. We're not going. We're going to sleep right here in this house. With what, a cop in the kitchen and Spinal's in the window seat? That's all he's got of us. We'll take Spinal to him, we'll double him in the bed. After that, we're coming back here. Then if he tries to interfere... No, Johnny, please, take it easy, please. Doctor, we've got a wonderful setup here. Two old ladies as a front. Can't you see we could make a fortune? Only Mortimer stands in our way. I never did like Mortimer. Johnny, please. You see. know when I make up my mind, Doctor. Yeah, I know when you make up your mind, you lose your head. Look, what I'm trying to say is that Brooklyn ain't a good setup for you. Okay, Johnny, okay. Take the instruments and stash them in the cellar. Move fast. Mr. Brooklyn! Yes, Mortimer! I thought I told you to leave. We're not going. Oh, you're not going to me. No. No. We've got an ace in the hole. Oh, you say I miss. You asked for it. I'm Sarah O'Hara! Now, if you tell O'Hara what's in the window seat, I'll tell him what's down in the cellar. Tell him! There's an elderly gentleman down there who seems to be quite dead. What were you doing down in the cellar? Well, what was he doing in the cellar? Now, what are you going to tell O'Hara? Hey, your aunt took my opening, it's swell. They want to hear the rest, shall I bring him in here? Oh, no, no, you better go over here. What the heck is bringing in? You got me rolling out. I want to tell you the whole plot. Uh, you can't tell me in front of these two fellas. They won't appreciate it. Oh. Low brows, huh? Yes, yes. See, why don't we meet later in a place where we can be in private? Save the back room at Kelly's. Kelly's? Yes. Yeah, sure, at Kelly's. Fine place for a bohemian atmosphere. Genius at work, you know. Now go over here, I'll meet you later. Fine, fine. Why don't you both go down to the cellar? That's all right with me. Oh, no, 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 no. Much more literary atmosphere at Kelly's, I can assure you. Okay. No, I'll meet you later. This opening will kill you. You will. See, I'm waiting to be born, and the doctor comes oh, in. Oh, the doctor? Oh, yes. Go over here, I'll meet you later. You won't stand me up, Mr. Brewster, will you? No, no, no. All right, this is a great play. You'll like it. I'll see you down there. I will. Can't wait, can't wait, can't wait. You think you're so smug. You think you, I can't go to the police because you think you've got a hold on me? Well, you don't. Once I get these papers signed by Spinalto, I mean the doctor. Once I get these papers signed by the doctor, I don't care who knows about Hoskins. Yeah, Hoskins. And you should feel the same way about Spinalto. Yeah, Spinalto. Where are you going? I'm going to get a doctor. As a matter of fact, wait for me. We'll wait for him. Did he look guilty? Well, Martha, I think we can start the services now. Oh, we thought we heard you leave. Perish the thought, Aunt Martha. And Aunt Abby, that was just Mortimer. And speaking of services, would you make us some coffee while we take Mr. Spinalto down to the cellar? Oh, no, no. There's a friend of Mortimer's downstairs waiting for him. Uh, a friend of Mortimer's? Take his feet, Doctor. Yes, Mr. Spinalto and he will get along fine together. They're both dead. Oh, he must mean Mr. Hoskins. Mr. Hoskins? You know about what's down there? Yes, but of course we do. And he's no friend of Mortimer's. He's one of our gentlemen. Your gentleman? Yes. And we won't have any strangers buried in our cellar. But, Mr. Hoskins... Oh, Mr. Hoskins is no stranger. Besides, there's no room for Mr. Spinalzo. The cellar's crowded already. Crowded? <laughs> With what? There are twelve graves down there now. And that leaves very little room when we're going to need it. Twelve graves. That you and Aunt Martha have murdered. Oh, well, murdered? Certainly not. It's one of our charities. Why? Oh, what we've been doing is a mercy. So you just take Mrs. Spinalzo out of here. And you've done all that right here and buried them in the cellar. That's wonderful, Johnny. 
We've been chased all over the world, and they stay right here in Brooklyn, and they do, and they do just as good as you. What? Yeah, you got twelve. They got twelve. Uh, <laughs> no, no, Johnny. You got twelve. Don't brag. Thirteen. There's Mr. Spinalzo and the first one in London. Two in Johannesburg, one in Sydney, one in Melbourne. Two in San Francisco, one in Phoenix, Arizona. Phoenix? The gas station. Oh, the gas station, yeah. Three in Chicago and one in South Bend. That makes 13. No, no, John, you cannot count the one in South Bend. He dies of pneumonia. He wouldn't have died of pneumonia if I hadn't shot him. No, no, Johnny. You got 12? They got 12. The old ladies is just as good as you. <laughs> they are, are they? Well, that's easily taken care of. All I need is one more, just one more. And I have a pretty good idea of who it's going to be. <laughs> My brother, Mortimer. I just heard him upstairs. No, no, Johnny, I'm tired. You forget I got offer in your face tomorrow. You are going to offer it tomorrow. But tonight we are taking care of Mortimer. Oh, Johnny, I'm sleepy. We can do it tomorrow or the next day. Look at me, Doctor. You can see that this must be done, can't you? Okay, Johnny. Okay. Okay, Johnny, we'll do it. But the quick way. The quick twist like in London. No, Doctor. I think this must be an artistic achievement. I think this calls for the Melbourne method. No, Johnny, not the Melbourne method, please. Two hours and then what? The fellow in London was just as dead as the fellow in Melbourne. Oh, no, 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 Mr. President, let's not do that. I cannot sign any proclamation without consulting my cabinet first. Ah, uh, this is a secret proclamation. A secret proclamation? How unusual. Yes, it's the only way to outsmart the other fellow. Who's the other fellow? Uh, that's the secret. I see, very clever. Well, if it's a secret proclamation, must be signed in secret. Yes, I will put on my signing clothes. Oh, but Mr. President, you're already wearing your signing clothes. So I have. Wait here. Hey, Mr. Brewster. What is it? You get out of here. Can't you see I'm busy? <laughs> da, 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 da. Yes? No! He stayed! His 
this man doesn't have the sense to be on his guard. The murderer even invites him to sit down. Do you know what he does? Well, I don't know. He sits down. Oh, I remember it. He deliberately pulls up a chair and sits in. Now, isn't that great? This fellow is supposed to be bright. And he just pulled up a chair and sits in it with his back towards the murderer. He's sitting there. He's supposed to be bright. And he's just sitting there, waiting to be trussed up and gagged. And do you know what they gagged up with? What? The curtain cord. <laughs> the curtain cord? But didn't we see him get it? Oh, no! <laughs> Seen him get it. No, the silly chop just sits there with his back towards the murderer. Now, in a play, or a movie, for that matter, a fellow never sees or hears anything. Oh, that's right. Now, look at this. Look at the attitude on this guy. Large as life. Supposed to be bright. And he just sits there. Wait to be trussed up and gagged. A big toe. <laughs> Never, my dear brother, were you out of my mind. In Melbourne one night, I dreamt of you. The more you struggle, Mortimer, the more you strangle yourself. Later on, you may consider that to be a blessing. Now, Doctor, we go to work. Johnny, for me, the quick way. Doctor, this must be an artistic achievement. Johnny, please. After all, we're performing before a very distinguished critic. Johnny, please. Doctor. All right, all right, let's get it over with. No, but I cannot see this without, without a drink. Pull yourself together, Doctor. But I can't pull myself together. Remember when we first came here? There was some wine. And then they took it. Where did they put it? <laughs> hey, Johnny! I found some wine! I found some wine! Here, I'll split it with you. I'm so glad we have both had the drink before we all Here. Here. Doctor, one moment, please. Where are your manners? Yes, Mortimer, I've been away for 20 years, but never, my dear brother, were you out of my mind. We drink to you. Doctor, to my dear dead brother. Rosie! No! Idiot! Who knows next? That's all. He goes next. We'll get to him later. Now, get to him. Oh, it's, but there's a dope bean with a long knife crawling after me, right? I'm in great danger. 